Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Spider Cafe, a place for creepy crawly talk and micro photography. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, some of the enclosures that I have and I'm going to be talking about where I got my tarantulas. So I mentioned a few enclosures there and a few brands like Primal Cages, which I really like, uh, Zilla, which I don't like. Also, I want to mention um, Herb Cult, which those are pretty good, but they leak at the bottom. So that is probably better for some of the really dry species that you want to keep. And um, I also want to talk a little bit about where you should get your tarantula. The best place to get it is from a breeder or from somebody reputable online. I started on a web page called Arachnoboards and they have classifieds and there's a lot of already established breeders and people who've been in this industry for a while and they have reviews on them and uh, this is where I found Joe Rossi and he's been great. I got a lot of tarantulas through him. I got some of them as a freebies and uh, he's been very knowledgeable and he's been helping me out. The reason why I say go there and don't go to pet store is because at pet stores uh, usually you're gonna get a wild code which is something you kind of want to avoid initially and they also don't have uh, much knowledge about these spiders uh, they will try to upsell things that you may not need like heating pads and stuff like that so I don't recommend that I would rather uh, go on to place like arachnoboards I also found on arachnoboards a uh, spider room if you're local to uh, southern California both of these places are awesome Joe Rossi you can find him like I said on arachnoboards or the spider room which you can find online I will probably show some footage of the room here and uh, you can go there basically to the spider room and see your spiders before you buy them so I think that's a huge advantage and uh, Matt is also really good the guy who works there and who owns it basically he's really good really laid back uh, he can give you advice on how to keep them so both places are really good and if you shop in for jumping spiders there is few sites that you can find yourself easily but if you want the secret one there is a person named let me make sure that I don't mess it up Jan Log and you would spell it J-A-N as a first name and the last name L-O-G-G and I hope these people don't mind me giving them shout out, but uh, they've been really great. And uh, she's somebody I found on Facebook and I got my uh, giant jumping spiders through her, the Helos Giganteus. So those are kind of hard to find. And she's got some other uh, jumping spiders that are kind of more rare, you know, in, um, on the market in the United States. Okay, now let's talk about tarantulas. All right. So first, let me talk about my curly hair tarantula. So we got two of those. The first one I actually got as a freebie from Joe Rossi when I bought some other spiders. And the second one I got because I really wanted some uh, bigger spiders. So I went to the spider room and I got three bigger tarantulas. <laughs> I started with one and I drove back and uh, four hours and something and I got two more. But it was totally worth it because uh, they are really exciting when they get to that size. They not as skittish as the little slings. So back to the curly hair tarantulas and my cheat sheet right here. So this species is native to Nicaragua and Costa Rica. Primary and nocturnal opportunities ambusher. Curly hair preys on insects, even small vertebrates. I keep mine on a little bit of a humid side. The reason for that is, um, I don't know if you guys follow bird spiders CH. It's a really good YouTube channel where the person uh, and the guy in the channel, he travels around the world to tarantula locations. You get to see where your spiders live in a real you know, environment. And I know that this species is disputed and same with uh, some of the other ones. Do they like it humid? Do they like it dry? You will see a lot of care sheets where people tell you that they like it dry. But when you watch where they live in a real environment, you'll find out that they actually don't. They actually like it really humid and wet. And by humid and wet, uh, just uh, so we are clear on what I mean, uh, that means that uh, all of their substrate is basic damp or moist. So basically, not just the bottom layer, but kind of keep it uh, damp and moist by uh, watering it once a week using the drainage holes. And then also I have a, one of these guys, so you can make it rain. <laughs> Next species, back to my cheat sheet. Xanesta species blue. So I keep that sling and it's a wild one. Most recently, um, I was trying to feed it, but as you can see, it's in free mode right now. Uh, so the cricket went into his hideout and the spider completely freaked out uh, and like kind of like ran in the back. So I was just like, all right, let me get the cricket out. And <laughs> as soon as I put my tweezers in, the spider ran out on the tweezers. So thankfully I didn't freak out, I just put them down gently and he stopped by my hand, but uh, it was pretty surprising, I didn't expect it, it was super fast too. They come from uh, arid and mountainous regions of Colombia. 
They are currently undescribed to science, that's why the name Xenesti species blue. They are common in a hobby and a lot of research has been done so they should have scientific names soon. They are great eaters and pretty confident spiders even as a slings. Xenesti species blue is different than the other members of the Xenestis tribe <laughs> uh, because of their blue coloration. They all kind of look alike, uh, but the Xenestis species blue has uh, blue legs, so that makes it a little different. Next tarantula on the list, Chromatopelma, Cyanio pubescens, uh, or for short GBB, uh, Green Bottle Blue Tarantula. Those are great beginner tarantulas, they're beautiful, they stay out on the display, they have a lot of color and they actually change color as they grow, so they start, start out with almost these tiger-like stripes and eventually they turn into this blue beauty with an um, orange abdomen, really beautiful spider and really easy to care for. They don't need, uh, They like it a little bit on the drier side, so basically once a week I overwater it. Uh, it's water dish and that's about it. And then I feed it twice a week when it's, uh, because it's a sling, when it's not uh, in pre-mode. And it eats all the time. Uh, it's a happy spider. Next is Gramostella rosea, also known as rosehair tarantula, the Chilean fire tarantula, or the Chilean red hair tarantula. These are really common in the hobby in Europe and in the United States because Chile used to have an open trade and um, uh, they've been around for a long time. I got mine as a freebie from uh, Joe Rossi that I mentioned earlier and we love it. We named it Piglet because of its colors and it borrowed itself but it borrowed itself right by the edge of the plastic so we actually get to see it and it spends a lot of time outside anyways. It's a really good eater. Uh, some people say that theirs can stop eating for months, even slings. They can go without food for a while, but they haven't had that problem at all. She's a really, really good eater. The species can be a little bit on the drier side, but because it's a sling, uh, I still keep it like a little bit more moist because um, they molt very often and when tarantulas molt, uh, they shedding their, basically their skin, their exoskeleton from the outside. And before they do that, they build a new one underneath and uh, they have to push humidity and the liquid between uh, the old and the new one in order to shed it. So since the spiderlings are molting very often, you know, I keep them a little bit on a, more on a humid side, but then when you see them on the location uh, on the channel that I mentioned, you can see that they live in a pretty dry area. So you basically just want to have a, maybe half of the enclosure, bottom layer uh, of the substrate wet. And I'm not doing currently any care sheets because there's plenty of those online and I haven't kept these spiders for long enough for me to do a care sheet. I can just tell you how I keep them and what research I've done and then you know you can decide for yourself. Next couple of tarantulas I want to talk about are from Aponopelma family and the first one is Aponopelma calcodes and it's also commonly known as a western desert tarantula or Arizona blonde or Mexican blonde tarantula and they are our local spider basically not native to California but they live in Arizona which is about seven hours drive from here and initially I uh, wanted a little bit more exotic spiders but then in order to get some of the larger spiders I had to go for basically what was available and it was available and I was undecided between this and a pink salmon bird eater I believe it was and um, uh, my body steered me a little bit towards this one and I'm so happy it's a, such a mellow spider it's a, such a sweetheart the rehousing was so easy and so fun it's a really good eater I just feel bad right now because I just want to move it to its new enclosure that's coming in mail so two more days and uh, it's gonna be in a big uh, enclosure with a lot of substrate and a nice hideout so uh, but I highly recommend those and they are lot prettier in a real life than what you see in any video basically the videos don't do justice to them and uh, not even pictures next is uh, also Aponopelma Aponopelma semani and that's my Costa Rican zebra tarantula that's also known as a striped knee tarantula also another staple in a hobby I also got her as a larger and this one should be a female so this is pretty exciting because the female tarantulas live a lot longer than the male tarantulas some male tarantulas live only a few months after uh, they mature and females can live up to 20, even 30 years. It's always very desired for uh, the tarantula keepers to uh, have a, a female. Okay, and the next on the list is Caribana versicolor. It's an uh, absolutely gorgeous tarantula. I highly recommend this species uh, for anybody. You keep this one uh, as arboreal tarantula because they live in trees and they web up trees and that's how, that's where they catch their prey. They used to die very often because they come from like a very humid area and a lot of keepers would keep them really really humid but what they like even more is a really good ventilation so when you guys get those basically Try to make sure that your uh, enclosure has some cross ventilation and basically then you can keep it almost dry. I have a very little substrate in it that I keep just, a, you know, maybe once a week I uh, spray a little, uh, not spray, but actually use a um, syringe and just put a little bit of water in it 
and then I spray every other day a mist, a little bit of hair enclosure and she basically gets a lot of moisture from the walls of the enclosure or from her web and I've seen her drinking many times so it's pretty common so that I highly recommend. A little bit about them, uh, so besides that they live in the trees they also start up as a blue slings and then they change into these uh, really fluffy and kind of ginger orangey hair uh, tarantula. They are really skittish. The rehousing was uh, probably the hardest one ever. Not because it was uh, some sort of a dangerous uh, tarantula, it was only a tiny sling of this size, but it just kept jumping and running and it just wouldn't do anything that you wanted it to do. So I'm not looking forward when I have to move it into a new closure and I'll probably try to move it only once or twice uh, during its uh, lifespan. And also when some people, when you see they have a irritating hair, uh, which a lot of the new world tarantula have, what it basically means this hair can uh, create allergic reaction and some tarantula uh, species kick them. They basically basically, you know, uh, use their real legs and to kick their hair. And um, this tarantula has a different strategy. When you would hold them, they would kind of like hang on to you and kind of almost like hug you and people would think that they are hugging them, but they actually spike in them with the hair. So uh, I don't recommend holding this species, to be honest. Okay, next on the list. Megaphobema robustum, also known as Colombian giant tarantula or Colombian giant red leg. This tarantula gets pretty big six to eight inches and it's fine in tropical forests of Colombia and Brazil uh, near logs and they like it pretty humid. Ours, I didn't even take pictures at the time because uh, to be honest I was kind of, at the moment it was my biggest spider and I was almost a little intimidated by it which to me is kind of funny right now because now the spiders are even bigger and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I can get something bigger even. <laughs> but I let it in its enclosure and I was like, let's take pictures some other time. But it buried itself immediately and we haven't seen it since, basically. We got some uh, nighttime footage the same day and after that we haven't seen it. A lot of people say that they actually never, uh, as a slings, they sometimes don't even leave their burrow and they just kind of eat whatever gets in there. And so that's what I've been doing. Since she's not coming out, I basically just put something in there, either like a pre-killed cricket or cockroach really close to her uh, there's like one little hole that she has and e either there or I just pop it all the way in and you know she grabs it they have a really interesting defense mechanism so I was already talking about the eradicating hairs these guys also have like this spiky hair on their rear leg some tarantulas when they get the defensive they basically raise their front legs to show you those you know those fangs this tarantula turns around and basically she kicks its legs and spike the attackers or intruder with those hairs on their legs so that's a little different about uh, um, and a little unique about Megaphobema robustum. And we got two more. Syria Cosmos elegans, which is a dwarf tarantula. And if you guys watch my previous video, you saw I got a t-shirt with it. And these are absolutely stunning. And ours finally, which is an update on our collection too. Ours finally got the orange colors. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna give it maybe one or two molds and then we're gonna get some pictures done. They come from Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago. From what I've gathered about them, uh, they like to stay out kind of on the display when they're webbing and they are pretty ballsy for small tarantulas. So I'm excited for it to get bigger. And the final one will be Neoholotella insei. And we have a Neoholotella insei species is gold. Basically this is a tarantula from Trinidad and Venezuela and uh, they have two different forms, gold and olive. The olive one um, basically says it all right, well both basically say it all. So the olive one is olive in color and the gold is basically gold brownish with co in a color. And both, um, at least from the little while that I've been keeping in mind, uh, this is kind of the same situation as the sea elegans when the spider likes to stay on the display kind of webbing up during the day. So I, I recommend it, it's a pretty cool spider. I got this one as a freebie. What is a little unique about uh, Neoholotella Insei is that they can, uh, some people keep them communally. Joe Rossi, who I got it from, uh, recommended just, you know, keep it individually, but apparently they've been uh, seen eating together, you know, and a lot of people keep them communally, kind of like uh, M. Balfouri. But like I said, there is uh, opinions on everything and uh, I currently just keep it as an individual. And finally, let's just give you a quick update on our collection. So yeah, we got three new big tarantulas, so that's very exciting. And we currently have 25 spiders and I'll probably keep it just around this number because maybe I mentioned in some previous videos we are planning on moving. Just don't want to get it uh, out of control. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and notification buttons. And I hope to see you soon. Alright, ciao. Sorry, little tarantula. Where we come out, huh? Yeah, there you go.